Hi everyone. So in this video, let us discuss about the OSI security architecture. So in a sense, all of us know about the OSI model. It is one of the foremost uh, reference models that we study whenever you want to talk about computer networks or how network communications take place. Usually there are seven layers in an OSI model, uh, application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physical layer. If you haven't studied this OSI model before, I suggest you go back to the OSI models video that I posted on my channel. You can just have a, a better understanding of the OSI model there. Coming to this particular video, what we are going to talk is uh, why we are considering this OSI security model. It's pretty simple. As most of you are aware, OSI actually stands for Open Systems Interconnection. It is a conceptual model created by the ISO, which is International Organization for Standardization, which describes the networking or telecommunication systems as seven layers, each performing a specific function related to network communication. When you want to learn about uh, communication via a network from point A to point B, what are, the th what are all the things that needs to be done? What each layer does for this communication is actually described very well in the OSI model. Uh, let it be the network layer or let it be the data link layer or the physical layer. Each layer has a, got a specific task and a standardized function. Because of this, such uh, reference models or the standardization of these tasks, many vendors came up with uh, their uh, models or uh, protocols. All these things will fit into place and they are accepted worldwide. So it's a standard. Any it doesn't matter wherever you go, it works the same. Similarly, we have something called as the secure OSI security architecture, which is once again given by ITUT, International Telecommunications Union, Telecommunication Standardization Sector. That is what T stands for. So ITU has two branches, ITUT and ITUR. ITUT stands for telecommunication sector and ITUR stands for radio communication sectors, which deals with wireless communications. So it is a recommendation X.800, which is the security architecture for OSI. It defines a systematic approach of standardizing the security requirements for an organization and also means of satisfying these requirements. Now, earlier when we are talking about the computer security, I told you that the main objectives of security involve the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, availability. As a security manager for your organization, you know what kind of data that you have and how this data should be provided to your customers, how it has to be safeguarded. To standardize your requirements and to implement policies so that your requirements are met, you need to have some kind of standard approach. That approach and the way how you can define these approaches and the different terminology used is under the is covered under your security architecture for OSI. So the standard definition of requirements in terms of security services and mechanisms to thwart the security attacks are recognized internationally and are also globally accepted. Now, there are three main terms in this particular sentence. The terms are security services, security mechanisms, and also security attacks. Your OSI security architecture covers about these three terms in general. It defines these three terms so that we, we can understand security better. So let's uh, discuss about each one of these terms in detail. First one is being your security attack. So it's a simple and straightforward definition. It says that any action that compromises the security of information owned by an organization, so any uh, maleficent act, any act with uh, a bad intent towards uh, compromising the security of an information system, that is called as a security attack. Simple and straight. And we will discuss more about uh, details of the security attacks, the different categories of the attacks, all this in the next video. The second term which we discuss is something called as a security mechanism. A security mechanism can be defined as a process that is designed to detect, prevent, or recover from a security attack. It can be anything, a process or even some fiscal control, you can say. So security mechanisms are something which have been designed to detect, even prevent, or even recover from a security attack that happened. The third one being your security service. The security service 
can be defined as a processing or communication service that enhances the security of the data processing systems and the information transfers of an organization. In simpler terms, if you want to implement security, let it be you want to uh, ensure that your sensitive information is kept confidential or your information's integrity, trustworthiness is maintained or authentication mechanisms are implemented. So all of those things which are implemented to enhance your security or the security of your data, of your information systems can be termed as security services. Once again, we will go and uh, have a uh, separate video on security services. What are the different services? What are the different uh, sub-services that come under the security services in that particular video? As of now, just remember that there are three terms which have been defined under OSI security architecture. The first one is in security attack. The second one is security mechanism. And the third one is your security service. So to put into perspective, these three terms come together in such a way that the services are intended to counter the security attacks and they make use of one or more security mechanisms to provide the service. So why do we have services? We need services to ensure that we have protection against attacks. So to protect against these attacks and implement these services, we make use of maybe one or more mechanisms coupled together. We can use just one mechanism or maybe one or two mechanisms added together or coupled together to ensure that we have the services in place so that we can safeguard against attacks. This is a kind of a cycle thing. So these are the three terms which are covered under your OSI security architecture. So in addition, in, in, in addition to these three terms, we do have something else which are given by RFC 4949, 4949 which are frequently used to explain the concepts related to network security. The terms are, the first one is the threat. Threat can be explained as a potential for violation of security, which exists when there is a circumstance, capability, action, or event that could breach security and cause harm. Simpler terms, a threat is a possible danger that might exploit a vulnerability. So threat uh, can make use of a vulnerability. So that is something, it's like a danger. It can happen, it cannot, it might not happen. But it is a pause, there is always a possibility of a threat. I'll give you one example which gives you, which makes use of all these three terms, or all the four terms, in fact. The second one is something called as vulnerability. What do you mean by vulnerability? It is a flaw or a weakness in the system's design, implementation, or operation and management that could be exploited to violate the system's security policy. It might be a, uh, an oversight uh, or it might be an inherent weakness in the design itself. Maybe uh, uh, a poorly coded uh, program, whatever it might be. There, an attacker always tries to find out the vulnerable, what the, where the vulnerabilities are there in your system. That comes under vulnerability. It is nothing but a weakness in your system design, which can be exploited by the attacker. The third one, attack as we just uh, read before, an assault on the sec system security that derives from an intelligent threat. That is an intelligent act, which is that is deliberate attempt to evade security services and violate the security policy of a system. That is called as an attack or in simple terms, which we discussed just before, an attack is nothing but an actionable event, which tries to compromise the security of your system, anything. So that is the same which has been uh, written over here. It says that an intelligent act, purposefully targeted attack, a deliberate attempt to evade the security services and also violate your security policy of the system. The last term here is something called as a risk. So what is a risk? This is a possibility that a threat exploits a vulnerability in an asset and causes damage or loss to the asset. So you have a vulnerability, you have the threat, you have an attack, and finally comes the risk. Risk is nothing but vulnerability and threat combined together gives you the risk. To understand these terms better, let me explain, let me give you a small scenario. Imagine that uh, there is one organization where one of the employee has been fired because of misconduct, okay? Unfortunately, the HR people uh, forgot to revoke his credentials. So this, this employee, 
now which we can term him as a disgruntled employee not happy with the decision of the company goes home and he finds that uh, and he finds that his credentials are still active and goes into the system and maybe does something which where he can gather uh, when where he was able to where he was successful to gain access to some kind of sensitive information and then leaks it onto the internet or maybe deletes it from the system in this scenario the vulnerability is that the hr hasn't revoked the credentials the the hr must revoke the credentials once the employee has been fired from the system that is your vulnerability it is a weakness in the design somewhere a gap has been found that the hr people couldn't cut his access off threat is because he knows that he has the access he can do anything now there is a possibility of danger where this employee can either uh, get into the information system and maybe delete the resources or put it to somewhere else or maybe leak confidential documents that is your threat attack is that the way through which he uses this vulnerability to gain access into the system's resources and from there onwards what type of attack he performs or what type of action he performs whether he might if he wants to uh, get into or he wants to access something else whereas some other documents where he was not supposed to have access that can be termed as that can be termed under as attack finally let us assume that the first three things are done and he gets hold of some confidential information or the client's information and he discloses them onto the internet that is your risk the risk comes in terms of defamation of the company uh, loss of uh, trustworthiness people so you are now you are no longer reliable if you are losing uh, credentials of your clients who would come and believe you so these are the terms which come under the osa security architecture i will make separate videos for uh, the security attacks security services and mechanisms to understand these terms better do check out those videos so uh, till then take care and good luck